Jaden here, a teacher at the Boyne Island Environmental Education Centre. I hope you've been learning a lot in our online lessons. Let's grab our gear and go explore the Great Barrier Reef. Today our lesson is a journey through the Great Barrier Reef. Whenever we create a lesson, it's important we always consult the Australian curriculum to ensure we are making appropriate links with the content we provide. At the beginning of each lesson, we create some objectives to ensure students will know what they will be learning, how they will know they will be successful, and why they are learning. So let's have a look at what am I learning today? Today I am learning the importance of coral to the reef ecosystem. I am also learning that the coral reef ecosystem has a variety of organisms that live together and have specific roles in the functioning of the coral reef ecosystem. Then we look at how will I know if I am successful at the end of the lesson? I can explain the importance of coral in the coral reef ecosystem and the role they have. I can recognize the features of coral that allows it to survive in the reef ecosystem and I can describe the food chain and its importance on the coral reef ecosystem. So why learn about the Great Barrier Reef? As a Reef Guardian School, we believe it's really important that students are educated about the Great Barrier Reef. This is because its biodiversity of species and habitats makes it one of the most complex natural systems on earth. It's essential we look after this environment to make sure our marine life and reefs are safe and healthy. Today, our journey begins in outer space. The Great Barrier Reef is so vast that it is even visible from here. The Great Barrier Reef is located on Australia's northeast coast and stretches 3,625 kilometres along the state of Queensland. It is made up of 3,000 separate reefs, 900 islands, 600 varieties of soft and hard corals, 30 species of whales and dolphins, and a staggering 1,625 species of fish. It is a diverse habitat and is classed as one of the seven natural wonders of the world. We start our expedition in outer space for a really important reason. The Great Barrier Reef and all the reef systems around the world are aligned on something up here, and that's the sun. Sunlight is absolutely crucial to coral, as it gains 90% of its energy from sunlight. So without the sun, corals wouldn't survive and this habitat for millions of animals creating an amazing ecosystem wouldn't exist. Taking this into consideration, can you think of why corals aren't found in deep bodies of water? If not, continue along in the video as we learn about the importance of sunlight for corals on our reefs. To understand the relationship between our reefs and the sun, it's important we learn about what exactly coral is. Our virtual reality tour brings us to an environment thriving with life. If I'm not talking about fish or other marine species, can anyone have a think about what I might be talking about? I'm talking about these. Here in the Great Barrier Reef is a healthy ecosystem of coral. Coral is sometimes confused for rocks or plants, but in fact, they are animals. They're made up of thousands of tiny animals called polyps. Polyps are tiny, soft-bodied organisms related to sea anemones and jellyfish. And they are often mistaken for plants because they take root on the ocean floor like most plants do. These invertebrates build a skeleton to protect themselves, which hardens into a compound called calcium carbonate. When colonized, thousands of polyps work together to form our corals. Polyps are classed as animals as they don't make their own food like plants do. They actually have tiny tentacle-like arms that they use to capture their food from the water and sweep it into their mouths. So why is coral so important? Corals make an amazing habitat and ecosystem for all sea creatures that live in the ocean. It is believed that while coral reefs around the world are thought to make up less than 1% of the ocean, they're home to 25% of all of the world's fish species. There are a few different types of coral, including hard and soft coral. Hard corals are formed from polyps that have built their skeleton to protect themselves, creating a shell. While soft corals don't form a skeleton shell and can be seen to be more delicate, often looking like leafy plants or trees, as you can see here. Now we come to the importance of the sun and why it plays such a vital role. Corals need a few elements in order to live. As you can see in the photo, sunlight is one of the most important elements. 
This is because coral depends on a mutualistic relationship with an algae to survive. Mutualistic relationship means that they both, the algae and the coral, receive positive benefits from their partnership. Coral contains a photosynthetic algae called zooxanthellae that actually lives in their tissue. They work together as the coral provides the algae with a protected environment and compounds they need for photosynthesis. In return, the algae produces oxygen and helps the coral remove any waste. For this reason, because the algae requires sunlight to photosynthesize, this means that most reef building coral is only found in shallow water. As sunlight can't usually penetrate further than 200 meters below sea level, so anything below this is filled with darkness. But sunlight isn't the only thing that is required for coral to live. Let's go through a little checklist of what else coral requires to live and thrive. Coral needs clear water that actually lets the sunlight through. Coral needs warm water conditions to survive. It needs clean water without any pollutions and it needs to live in salt water. When all of these are put together, it creates our reefs and it is really an essential habitat for so many of our marine species. Now that we know all about coral, let's continue on our dive and have a look at some coral growing on the Great Barrier Reef. This coral we have here, looking like a human brain, believe it or not, is called the brain coral. While it's able to grow up to two meters in diameter, it's a very slow grower, only growing a few millimeters per year, meaning that a large brain coral like this can be hundreds of years old. This next species of pointy coral you can see is called the staghorn coral. It is known as one of the fastest growing species and is able to grow up to 20 centimeters per year. Unfortunately, we also come across coral that is damaged. There are several causes that contribute to damaged coral, but the main damage occurs from climate change. The reality is the negative effect of climate changes are drastic and have been making an impact on our coral reef systems worldwide. Coral requires a particular environment to survive and flourish. With climate change causing the temperature in our oceans to increase, we are seeing more and more images like these on here. This is known as coral bleaching. Due to the rising temperatures, corals expel their algae, the zooxanthellae, due to unsuitable conditions and this bleaching occurs. If the conditions return to normal, this bleaching event can take up to 10 to 15 years to recover. Otherwise, they can be lost. Continuing on our dive, we come across a bommie. This is a coral structure that towers over the rest of the reef and provides a home to many of the creatures in the Great Barrier Reef. The word bommie originates from the Aboriginal culture and means mountain. A lot of marine species live within bommies. Fish don't stray far from their home, which might be a bommie, due to safety, and they use the coral to hide from predators by slipping in between the branches. They leave the corals to feed, but in doing so, they risk being eaten themselves if they stray too far. I hope you're starting to understand all about the coral and the importance of it within our reef systems. It's amazing to explore how the interaction between these tiny polyps, algae and sunlight are responsible for the whole coral reef system. Without them, I have no idea what we would do, as they also play a crucial part in the food chain. A food chain illustrates how each living species gets their food and how nutrients and energy are passed from creature to creature. From corals, plankton, small fish to apex predators, the Great Barrier Reef has them all and requires them all to live. So let's have a look at an example of a food chain on the Great Barrier Reef and how energy is passed from creature to creature. It starts with the phytoplankton, which is a photosynthetic primary producer. This means that it gains its energy from the sun and doesn't need to consume any organism to gain energy. The phytoplankton is then consumed by the zooplankton in order to gain its energy. The zooplankton is then consumed by other organisms such as the fan worm, the blue chromis, sea sponges, and coral polyps. The chain continues as these organisms are then consumed by other marine species, such as the pufferfish, 
the sea slug, butterfly fish and angelfish. Energy continues to be passed through and these bigger marine fish are eventually consumed by the reef shark. So why is this so important? The food chain is an essential part of maintaining a healthy ecosystem in our reefs. The saying, eat or be eaten is very relevant as species interact and eat other species. Without these apex predators, it would cause an imbalance in nature. This would lead to an increasing number of some species of fish causing overpopulation. So food chains protect the fragile balance there is between species. There are just the right amount of predators and prey. So who are some of the apex predators on our reef? Our dive brings us to one of the friendliest fish on the reef as it often gives divers a lot of attention. This is the potato cod. Growing up to two and a half meters long and 100 kilograms is one of the top predators in the Great Barrier Reef. This apex predator relies on a healthy ecosystem full of coral like all the other species. They like to ambush their prey by hiding behind coral until their food swims past. They lunge quickly to grab their meal. The potato cod's head and mouth are so large that it can swallow prey in one huge gulp. Accompanying these many fish, our next dive location focuses on a school of apex predators. The reef is filled with many apex predators and relies heavily on the predator to prey ratio. Apex predators include large game fish, dolphins, sharks and whales. This pyramid diagram shows the relationship and importance of apex predators, all other species and the sun on the reef system. This fish seen in front of you is known as the barracuda. They patrol the outer reef in large schools with streamlined torpedo like bodies. They're extremely fast swimmers and exceptional killers. Barracudas rely heavily on their eyesight when hunting as they are an apex predator. They mostly eat schools of fish. Next, lurking on the edges of the reef, a highly aggressive top predator swims around looking for its next potential prey. The tiger shark. Capable of measuring in over 5 meters, they detect prey using an array of finely tuned sensors, including electrical current detection. Rows of razor sharp teeth and powerful jaws allows them to crack through even the thick shells of a fully grown sea turtle. I hope you now understand more about the food chain within the Great Barrier Reef and other coral reef ecosystems. I would love to know what your favourite apex predator is and why. The Great Barrier Reef is one of the most amazing ecosystems and we are proud to say that we have it here in Australia. It is home to millions of marine life that all play an essential role in the fragile balance that maintains this healthy ecosystem. It's our job to make sure that we do as much as we possibly can to educate ourselves and to help save this natural wonder of the world from becoming damaged due to harmful events such as climate change. Thank you for joining me on this journey on learning a little bit more about our reefs. Today we explored coral, the importance of sunlight, the importance of coral to sea creatures and the predator-prey relationship. As a reef guardian school, we here at Boyne Island Environmental Education Centre believe it is so important to do what you can and help maintain our reefs. Let's revisit our objectives from our lesson today. What were you learning to do? You were learning about the importance of coral to the reef ecosystem and that the coral reef ecosystem has a variety of organisms that live together and have specific roles in the functioning of the coral reef ecosystem. So let's have a look to see if you were successful. Are you now able to explain the importance of coral in the coral reef ecosystem and the role they have? Are you able to recognize the features of coral that allows it to survive in the reef ecosystem? And are you able to describe the food chain and its importance on the coral reef ecosystem? Now that you've completed the lesson, some tasks have been created for you to complete. All of our lessons are linked to the Australian curriculum for students and have been created to be appropriate for various year levels to complete. This episode of the Great Barrier Reef is linked to the science outcomes in the Australian curriculum and links can be made from prep to junior secondary. Now students, you'll notice that we've created some tasks now that you've completed the online lesson. They've been grouped into your year level, such as prep year one and two, year three, four, five, six, seven and eight. Would you please pause the video when required and read the task? 
Any resources that you might need can be found on our online website. Remember, if you have any questions, please feel free to email in, leave a comment or send a message to our Facebook page. We are here to help and support you. We'd also love if once you've completed the task, if you could send it into our Facebook so we can have a look at it. Thank you for watching. I hope you've learned a lot about the Great Barrier Reef. Stay tuned for our next few episodes that we'll be putting up online.